Okay, back on the Magnavox really quick. I was able to find the model number. It's on a tag on the bottom of the of the cabinet. And I had to tend to, uh, one of the coasters had cracked the leg because it had dropped out of its socket and put undue stress on the uh, stand leg, but that's been mended and we took out some of the the carpet the carpet fibers and everything when they were caught up and uh, lubed the pivots a little bit. So it will move as it's supposed to without uh, causing any undue stress because the front two casters bear a lot of weight there. So uh, I'm going to go in now and we just checked it over for other other damage and whatnot. I need to get the chassis number because the model number doesn't allow me to look up the SAMs. Okay, and there's a uh, little ding in the uh, perf here. We'll push that back out, maybe put a little glue in there. So we've mended the leg, we clamped and glued that leg, put the caster back in, and I just put a little piece of heat shrink tubing on the bottom so it holds really snug and doesn't drop out. None of the wheels will drop out. I think I did the same on the, that front wheel. So the wheels, if you were to lift the cabinet up off of the floor, they won't drop down. So, and as far as the front goes, uh, the safety glass can come off and we can clean the crud that's accumulated along here. So uh, we'll just give the CRT a, a quick test. I do have a new old stock CRT for this, but let's see how the, this is the original CRT, we'll see how this does. So we'll get the back off. Okay, I'm just experimenting with these perf repairs here um, on the masonite. I've just gone ahead and I've put some just white Elmer's glue in there. The other side doesn't look bad. I flattened it down. I haven't lost any pieces. And I'll just put a piece of wax paper and some weight over the area there. so lays flat because over here we have a very broken Dumont panel and I have all the pieces I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna jigsaw this back together but uh, just experimenting here but I think it is possible it's amazing when I got the set the owner said well I knew it was tubes because I popped the uh, cap on the back off and looked inside but uh, go ahead and clean the uh, tube cap off. Very thin plastic. While we wait for the uh, the back to mend, let's go back in on the chassis and take a look. I need the chassis number so I can get the SAMs on it. Okay, much to uh, my surprise, it happens to be a transformer powered set, which is a nice feature. Uh, circuit breaker. The UHF is the slotted twin lead and the VHF is just the non-slotted. So we'll put those aside. High voltage cans, it's similar to a lot I've seen. But now the chassis number here, let's see, V360300. I don't know. Looks like we have some electrical tape work in here. The two bit, uh, the one rivet is broken off of the phenolic here, but uh, the tube appears okay. I'm gonna go in and test this and try and find a chassis number. Well, we do have um, solid state rectification here. So I'm going to do what another YouTuber suggested when I do power it up. If I do power it up, I will remove very carefully the plate cap off of the output tube without very carefully without breaking this off. These come loose but you can easily solder them back but you want them to stay tight. Okay we're gonna start with our heater down 5 to 8 range. And I believe the G1 was 27 to 70 something in that area. Let's do our heater adjust. 
to about 5 volts. Let me see if I can do anything about that glare here. I did bring it up to 8, about 8 volts for a few minutes, for about 4 minutes, and uh, that woke it up. It's in the good, so it should produce a picture. Okay, again, after setting cutoff, we're at 6.3 volts, and technically, it's in the good. Okay, while we were waiting for things to dry out there and whatnot, I did come across in the lower right-hand corner of the chassis, the chassis number, which is uh, V36-03, and this happens to cover a 23-inch Magnavox, but that, that's our set without UHF. One thing I want to mention, the horizontal output tube is dated 65, but the date on the SAMS is 8 of 62, so maybe the model was made into 65, or there was an output tube replaced by a Magnavox dealer. Well, we'll go take a look. Now on the inside of the cabinet there, it does say model 142, and it has a Maybe a date of 61 there, I'm not certain. But being UHF, and the original output tube is dated the 39th week of 65. We could try another tube, but for the most part, We'll give this a try. What I've also noticed while I was cleaning a vacuuming here, everything is so brittle. You want to try not to gobble up any paper. There's an ID, a serial number of the picture tube that fell down. That's inside. This uh, seal or whatever it was on the coil was loose. I just fastened that. The model tag was a little loose. It still is. And this one here has got a little dog ear. And this here corner vacuumed off, but I stuck it back because I have a Dumont like this where they would stick another tube chart over the tube chart here. So I don't know if, if this had another, looks like it has remnants of another outline here. So this may be a later chassis and it's stamped Magnavox up there in the, on the tin itself. Okay, looks like we're about ready for initial power-up. Um, first I'll go through the repair we made. It's, it's right here. If the cord's in the way, you can't see it, of course. There's some lines where it was. It's pretty much flat to the touch. Except right there. And uh, we put the tube cap back on. So... It'll be that for now. Over here, on our Variac, what I wanted to do was, uh, I didn't put this together. Just a couple things I discovered. While well, the input was just crimped, I added some heat shrink tubing because I didn't care for that so much. And the output, I've added a, a pigtail plug. I did not know, or may have forgotten, there is a, a plug on the side of this which I'll use to monitor the AC and this is running about 10 volts higher than what it actually is according to the scale perhaps we have high line voltage here any event its converter box is on we have our UHF VHF attached and it's a pull on power switch so we're going to monitor the power and turn the set on without the output tube present. Now, I may, yet, once we get it up a few minutes, I, uh, I found the, if you don't know what this is, you can get them pretty reasonable now, is uh, the inline horizontal output. Well, for power tubes too, it does audio tubes. What you do is you'll just, um, the left side is for these tubes and the right side is for these tubes. This happens to be a, I believe it's a 6DQ6 here. Six DQ6. 
So what I would do is six DQ six is the right hand side, so six DQ six says ninety five milliamps typical. We have the SAMs now, so we can check it, but what you do is you would just put this this in the place of the tube itself and then put the tube in the top of the socket. It just interrupts the, the cathode so you can read the current on the meter. And the meter goes from 0 to 300. Okay again so we have solid state rectification. I'm going to bring this up to about um, I'll start there at 22. We'll pull it on and we do see the voltage drop. I'm going to set the volume about midway and we'll bring it up to about 60 volts and just let it sit there. Don't see much on the picture tube lighting. Oh yeah, our audio output is lighting. The dial light is on in there. The tuner, the tuner tubes are lighting. The damper is lighting. And we'll let these capacitors form a little bit. We have a hint on the meter there. Come back in a few minutes. Okay, we're at zero volts. I'm going to go back up to our 60 volts. Okay, we'll see if we get any uh, cathode current on that meter. It did come up a little bit, I swear. Yeah, see, it, it's just inching up a half a needle width. The tube is conducting. Yeah, about 10 milliamp, 10, 20, and 10 milliamps. Okay, we'll lower it. Now, if we lower it or raise it up a little bit here, let's go up to. Up to 80, we should 86. We should start hearing and seeing something happen. That's 85 volts. Now we're drawing just about, okay, just about a hundred, so we're in range here. Don't see anything on the front of the set. Let's go up to a full. Oh, I see a picture, on. I see something lining up there. We're at 109, up to 112, Voltages. I don't have any sound. I have no sound. 
raise the volume on our converter box all the way up change the channel which our current here we'll wiggle some tubes around I can hear vertical I don't hear anything happening. Dirty tuner. I don't know. Let's go up front and take a look again. It's our vertical brightness. Let's see if we can lock the vertical in here. Contrast. These controls are dirty. Horizontal. I'm starting to see something here. No sound though. No sound, which is very odd. Come on, you know you want to run. On VHF. No sound. Weak signal, I see that. Let's get our vertical. The vertical had the most hand prints on it. No sound. Right, let's get the other. Okay, so there we have it. No sound. Let me check out of the speaker a minute. It's almost as if the speaker is not attached. I'm going to keep the volume low and check on the sound. Still drawing about the same. That's what this taping here is. Maybe the speaker is off. No, that's going to the yoke socket. The speaker is attached. Here's our output transformer. the speakers are attached. I see both forks going right to the, the speaker there. Could be our problem. Open resistor. No sound. Usually you hear some crunch 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 or something here. a replacement output tube down there. Well, we've had harder sets to troubleshoot. No sound. 
the detector, 6DT6. This is the detector. Probe around, we'll see if we have any sound. There's probably an open resistor here somewhere. I'm guessing. Check some voltages on this tube. Okay, I'm going to go back to our trusty lantern battery that we've used all along here. And I'm just going to do a quick, I've undid, undone one lead of the output transformer. I'm just going to hit the speakers real quick and fast and just see if there in fact is any... Ooh, there's sound. Okay. Speakers are good. We can meter the output transformer. Uh, primary and secondary next. Okay, I'm metering across the output transformer, the output, the secondary of the output, audio output transformer. It's showing a short circuit, dead short. I did go to the either side of the chassis, I have nothing. Those are the two leads touched together and the output of the transformer. I don't think that's quite right. Okay, before we go tearing into this too deep, um, the secondary of the audio output transformer says 0.3 ohms, so maybe we're within spec there. The primary could be shorted. Nothing short at the chassis. Again, we could have an open resistor. What we can do next is see if we have sound right here at the volume control, pin 3. Let's see what we get at pin 3 of the audio output tube. Okay, I was about to check the voltages in the circuit, and uh, I do want to check that output transformer's primary. But in the meantime, I figured, well, what the heck? It is a replacement tube, so I kind of dismissed it as being bad, but when I go to test it, the emission is good. But besides the two position that show shorts in, which is 1 and 8, it shows shorted on 3, and six. So I don't know. I've seen shorted tubes run before. 